Hello everyone, it's Michael Lazar here, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be talking about improvising in Byzantine chant. However, before we begin today's video, I just want to remind you all that I'll be offering three courses this summer, a beginner's Byzantine chant course, an advanced Byzantine chant course, and a singing technique course. So if any of those are interesting to you, please register um, using the links in the description down below. So improvising is one of the most important skills in any form of music. You know, in jazz, uh, the entire foundation of music is improvising over a set of changes and expressing yourself through those changes and improvising. In classical music, improvising is kind of the beginning to a lot of composition. So you see a lot of composers usually improvise ideas um, and then make sketches out of them before they uh, really start digging into the compositions. And in Byzantine chant, uh, learning how to improvise is very important because oftentimes you might not have the music readily available for the text, especially in the English language because um, although there's a lot of very, very good efforts and, and people that are out here trying to um, add to the English repertoire, there's still a lot of gaps. Um, that you might encounter on a weekly basis. So knowing how to improvise really helps to address a lot of the gaps that you might find um, whenever you're chanting. So what are the important things to understand if you're trying to improvise? One, you need to understand the tone you're working with. So this means knowing the scale you're using as well as the genre. So the genre is going to inform you of the stopping points on the scale. So that's quite important um, to understand how you're moving within the hymn so that you are doing it according to the genre and the way it's supposed to be performed. Um, the other important thing to look at is the genre. So, you know, how fast or how slow it is. So how many beats is each syllable getting? Um, this way you're sticking authentic to the, the form and the structure. So once you know the scale, the genre and the stopping points. The uh, next thing is also to make sure that you know the thesis of that tone in that genre. So you understand how to really, um, you know, move between the cadences. Um, and how do you study these? So one, look at hymnography. So get an idea of, you know, a lot of the theses that you'll tend to hear. And then along with hymnography, of course, listen to recordings. So this way, when you listen, you know, you get a a decent sense of how things are put together and you know you kind of get an idea of how the flow of things happen and this is not an easy process it takes a while so the uh, idea here is when you practice you know what I would recommend is try learning one tone at a time or one genre of a tone at a time that way instead of it being like I'm gonna learn all eight tones improvising within a week in reality improvising is a skill and you need to learn how to apply the skill to you know many settings in jazz, you're not going to hear someone learn to improvise on Dorian and then learn how to improvise on all the other modes just because, uh, you know, within a week, just because you know Dorian. In reality, you have to understand how each scale functions and learn how to improvise according to it. Um, so I'm going to give a practice uh, kind of a session and show you how I would go about uh, improvising and how to go about practicing improvising so that when you're at home, you can do this yourself. So what we're going to do is analyze a text. So we're going to figure out kind of the sentence structure of that so we can learn how we're going to move between the sentences. Um, we're going to learn where we're going to stop. When I say stop, I mean cadence on the root note. We're going to learn which notes we're going to accent, and we're going to learn how to apply theses. Now the basic rule for applying a thesis in an improvisation is it's the end of the phrase. So the beginning of the phrase is setting up the thesis and the end of the phrase is the thesis. The thesis being the musical phrase. Um, that's kind of the formula um, that you're kind of applying the text to. Um, and again, this is important with making sure it matches the accentuation pattern. So what you're singing doesn't sound like a, you know, a non-native speaker singing. It sounds like someone who knows the language is singing, because otherwise, you know, if you put the wrong emphasis on the syllable, that don't make sense. Um, now, there's other advanced techniques like text painting and using floras. Um, those again 
we all can look into them. Um, we can talk about them at the end, but when you're starting off, they're not necessary to really um, get your foot in the door. So let's talk about um, improvising. So right now I'm going to pull up a text. So this is uh, actually the fifth Iltinon Doxasticon. And um, if you look at the text, it's not a short text. Um, and I did that for a reason, because it gives us a bit more time to really kind of understand it and look at the important nuances in it. So, um, if you know the fifth Iltinon Doxasticon, it's going to be in tone five or plagal first. It's going to be the diatonic scale on pa. And the stopping points, because it's the stick hierarch genre, are pa, the, and ke. And because it's stick hierarch, it's about two to four, I'll put one in parentheses, beats per syllable. So it's going to be a generally a more andante feel, not not as slow as a cherubic hymn, but definitely slower than um, most hymns. But you know, moderately, um, you know, moderate pace. So, what would I do if I was to practice this at home? The first thing is you know break apart the phrases and the sentences. That way you kind of understand what you're applying and where you're going to apply them to. So let's just start with, you know, looking at where the periods are. If you look at this text, there's only two periods. It's really just two big sentences, but it doesn't make sense, you know, if we're going to improvise over them. Just think of two sentences for a hymn this long. Um, the better option is also look at some of the bigger, you know, ideas. So how wise are thy judgments, O Christ, and that thou, the screen of Peter, to understand thy resurrection, by thy coughing wrappings alone? That That's a pretty coherent idea, and I'll move my camera up so you can see the text a bit better. Um, the next one, whereas Luke and Cleopas, thou didst accompany conversing, and as thou didst, so thou didst not reveal thyself to them, and thou wast taunted by them, as though thou wert alone, Sorry, thou alone wert a stranger in Jerusalem, not knowing what had happened therein of late. So, this is a very, very long sentence. Um, and because of the grammar, you know, and it's Elizabethan English as well, um, it can get a little bit difficult to understand if we're not going to separate them right. So, whereas Luke and Cleopas, what I'm going to do is actually... Um, you know, kind of separate these two ideas, and then we're going to take these ideas and separate them further. So let's actually start with the first one. How wise is thy judgment, O Christ? I think that's a, you know, easy sentence to say, okay, this is a complete idea. And that thou dost grant Peter to understand the resurrection by thy coughing wrappings alone. So by thy coughing wrappings alone, it could fit in this whole thing. Um, Or it could be a second idea. Because this itself is a phrase fragment. By the coffin wrappings alone is dependent on what's coming before it. However, we can put it here. And because it makes sense on its own, just um, as a idea without the context, we can kind of put it by itself. The next one, whereas Luke and Cleopas, um, you know, what we can do is actually put the break there. Because it's a semicolon, so it's a longer pause than a comma, but it makes sense there. And as thou didst, so thou didst not reveal thyself to them. What we can do is, there, should, there might need to be a comma or break there. So what I might do is kind of just, in this put like an X. And as thou did so, thou didst not reveal thyself to them. Um, therefore, you know, when you're writing this, it's important to understand, you know, what are you saying and how can you make it make sense? Because the text is a little complicated here. And thou was taunted by them as though thou wert a stranger in Jerusalem, not knowing what had happened therein of late. What we could do is um, separate those two. And therefore, now we have, instead of one big sentence, we have seven ideas and fragments that make sense together but also can function independently when we write them with music. So, but since thou ordainest all things in conformity with thy creation, thou hast explained to them what the prophets had uttered concerning thee. 
and in breaking in the breaking of the bread they knew that after their hearts were aflame for thy knowledge and when they came together with the disciples they proclaimed openly the resurrection by which have mercy on us now we have a couple long sentences here and in the breaking of the bread they knew me after their hearts were aflame for thy knowledge we might break there if you want to <clears throat> and when they came together with the disciples they proclaimed openly the resurrection maybe we take a break there and let us explain to them what the prophets had uttered concerning thee. Again, we might take a break there. Um, again, not all these breaks are necessary, but it's just what we can do with them. Now, let's look at the, the other important thing is, you know, how are we going to move throughout this hymn? Um, are we just going to be moving, you know, <coughs> directly just pa to pa pa pa? Pa the ke, pa ke the pa. You know, where are we moving? So what I like to actually think about is um, the periods, you know, uh, as kind of the concluding, you know, parts of the sentence, and then the commas as kind of the more um, developing parts of the sentence. So what we can do, I like to, I like to do this, you know, if I'm going to improvise, maybe put a pa on the periods here, so that, you know, we're thinking about ending in there. And then, let's look at the other things, figure out how we can move. So, how wise are thy judgments, O Christ? Um, if you look at most settings of this text, um, oftentimes they'll put this on pa. At least the settings I'm thinking of. They don't have to go on pa. Um, they could also go to ke. Um, or, you know, the, but the is not really going to be as as used in this case. Usually, when you start tone 5, you usually end up going to ke first. Um, and you can figure this out if you look at enough hymns. But sometimes they go to pa, and on a lot of um, hymns, they might go to pa. So, in the Tao, this grand Peter, to understand the resurrection, what I would do here, if I were to sing this, maybe I would consider moving this to K and then um, maybe I put a break here maybe put this K and then maybe instead of K here I might put V and then I go to PA here and end here on PA so the way this is kind of coming out to be is instead of it being a you know a a, a very large phrase now this is kind of like four phrases together um, and they can work together so how wise are thy judgments O Christ something like that um, oh Christ maybe that's how I want to end that phrase and then here maybe I'll do something to get to that but the idea here is that I want to end here on pa and then maybe here I want to end on thee how would I end on thee resurrection maybe that's how I, how I go to thee to understand thy resurrection. Maybe that's how I do that sentence there. And to get to K. In that thou didst grant Peter to understand thy resurrection by thy coffin wrappings alone. Maybe that's how I want to move there. So improvising here, when I'm rather than thinking of all the phrases, I'm thinking of where am I moving? So pa to ke to the to pa. So I know that maybe that was a bit of a long explanation, but I hope that kind of gives an idea of how um, to move. So the next sentence, whereas Luke and Cleopas thou this accompany conversing, maybe I consider making that a ke. As thou did so, thou didst not reveal thyself to them. 
We can also make this two of these. Um, or we can figure out, you know, maybe there's a different you know, kind of stopping point we can do here. Maybe we can make this a K here or a D here. But, you know, given the text, thou does not reveal thyself to them. It's not really, I don't feel it warrants a K cadence. It's not really, um, you know, often I find that a K to K cadence usually has a bit of energy behind it. Thou does not reveal thyself to them is more of a, um, almost has a questioning connotation to them. Like you didn't reveal yourself to them. You know, K to K doesn't really match that sentiment as much. So I would consider putting the AV here at the end. Um, mm -hmm. And then if you go pa ka di, um, you know, maybe you want to go back to K here. What I was thinking actually. Um, you know, in this case, we're referring to Jerusalem, thou alone were a stranger in Jerusalem. A cat to cat cadence might work here. As thou was taunted by them as though thou were a stranger in Jerusalem. But these are going to pa here. And often you'll find that you don't really go to cat to pa. You usually go cat to thee to pa. So maybe what you might want to consider is maybe, and thou was taunted by them, break as a K cadence, as though thou alone were a strange Jerusalem, then this becomes a D cadence. And that way, the structure becomes pa ka di ka di pa, instead of pa ka di ka ka pa. The first one makes more sense with, um, kind of, I'm not going to say the, the, you know, typical, because there's always rules that break, but kind of the majority of the hymns that you'll see. So, pa were as Luke and Cleopas, thou didst accompany. That won't work there. That that thesis there, but um, conversing. Con or is it conversing? Right. Um, how are we going to accent the ver? That's where something might become difficult. What what sound? Um, versing, conversing. Maybe that's how you would think about ending it there. Um, company, conver. That won't work there, because then the con gets um, overly accented. So in this case, the important idea here is figure out. You know, how can you put a thesis here that, that makes ver and versing, conversing, the most important thing? Now here again, this can just be a transition to get to that thesis. So let's say you're improvising on the spot, um, you know, and you're reading this. How do you figure it out? Oftentimes you might just say one beat per syllable and then kind of um, see the ending and see where you can fit a thesis that works the best on that ending. So, um, um, a company conversing. It's not a really used thesis. That's not really a thing, but the idea behind it is is the idea that you're making verse in a more important beat. So, um, there are a couple solutions for this. So maybe on your own you can figure out you know what might work here. Um. Let's keep going. So, uh, you know, we kind of have a, a structure here. But since thou ordainest all things in conformity with thy creation, maybe I, but since thou ordainest all things, you know, this could be kind of a walk up setup to K. Maybe I want to make a K to K cans here. Um, with thy creation might be the thesis there thou didst explain to them what the prophets had maybe that won't work there but um maybe here instead of going you know i know the pause here 
Um, you know, kind of, this is kind of a, um, you know, if you look at the idea of the sentence, it makes sense that this might be the ending. But since thou ordainest all things in conformity with thy creation, thou hast explained to them what the prophet said uttered concerning thee. That's kind of part one. And in the breaking of the bread, they knew thee after their hearts were aflame with thy knowledge, or for thy knowledge. So, going pa makes sense. So, in, in the breaking of the bread, they knew thee. Maybe this could be like, um, back to ke. Um, and in this case, now, if I want to do an advanced technique, what we might consider doing is, um, potentially a thora. So you maybe want to do a hard chromatic ket ke cadence. Um, that that might be a thing that we could do there. Or you can often do an old sacraric cadence. Again, look at hymnography and you can figure out where you can apply these things. But um after their hearts were aflame for thy knowledge. Maybe that doesn't work there um, for what you're going for. But um, that cat to cat cadence there, I think, would work best structurally for kind of bringing the dr dramatic, I would say, implications of the text. Hearts were aflame for thy knowledge. It's not a dull text. It's quite intense. So I think only a catechetic cadence would really kind of give it the thing it needs. So here maybe you might consider doing a D to D cadence. Um, now I know I put a pa here because it ends here, but in reality um, Plago first Sikrak only ends on pa if it's the Theotokian um, or Doxa Kenin um, bef uh, before a priest you know, finishes the service or I mean not finishes the service but kind of starts again with what he's going to sing um, so by which have mercy on us would be a the ending instead of a pa ending because this is a Doxasticon that's a Kenin that comes after it however if it's a Theotokian it would be a pa ending so just a kind of preface. Um, probably should have clarified that earlier, but um, just to make sure before we continue. You know, and when they came together with the disciples, the here, and when they came together with the disciples, maybe that works there, they proclaimed openly the resurrection by which have met have mercy upon us. That's not a good way to end it. Um, upon us. Pa upon us. Upon us. Upon us. Or upon us. Figure out which one works the best there. Mer mercy upon us it would probably be the best solution there um, there's a couple other solutions that might work there um, maybe instead of going to D here you could also go to K I think that's what I did originally um, again there's flexibility but it just has to make sense following the general structure of you know what the piece makes sense um, or with uh, it has to follow the general structure of, you know, kind of what most hymns are based off of. So, you know, it looks like a lot to kind of analyze this, but um, this kind of gives you the foundation for, for really improvisation, you know, understanding where you're moving and how to move between things. Um, you know, if I were to practice this myself, um, I would kind of take a look at a couple things. Not just the phrases I'm building, but making sure that it matches um, the flow of the text. So what often you might want to do is record yourself improvising and then read the text while 
you're kind of singing the or playing the sentences back to and kind of think, does this sound like how I would say it? Because if it doesn't sound like how you'd say it, then, you know, maybe reconsider maybe your approach to, to how you're considering some of the phrases in that improvisation. Um, again, practice makes perfect. You know, I'm not the world's best improviser, but, um, you know, I know a lot of people who are really good improvisers, and oftentimes um, the people who are really good improvisers are people who improvise often. Um, people who improvise a lot and learn how to do it well um, end up using it as a, as a uh, you know, I'd say a more prominent expression of chanting as opposed to the um, text, uh, of course, when they're singing alone, because they often find the improvising allows them to have more freedom in regards to what they're chanting and giving more of the, I guess you can say, give the text even more meaning than what was written originally um, in the music they were looking at. So, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, again, practicing improvisation is not easy, but I hope this kind of gave an idea of how to approach it. I know this was a bit of a longer video, um, but again, uh, if you found this helpful, I'd greatly appreciate if you uh, liked and subscribed or maybe shared it with someone that um, you, know, you would also think would find it helpful. Again, make sure to check out the classes in the description down below. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one, and have a great day.